chickens around and the cats and, uh, and the having the bull, the, the cow, chase me uh, in front of a roaring creek and then I had to jump the fence to keep from drowning or him killing me. <laughs> That's my favorite child. <laughs> yes, I play ball, I play football, I wrestle, and I play with balls, and I hang out with my good friend Don Buckley. My favorite childhood memory was sitting around the table talking with my mom, my dad, my aunt, and my uncle. We all sat and talked after dinner. It was a lot of fun. Well, there's two. One was when I moved from Portland, Maine to South Portland, Maine, and, um, and I made a lot of friends. That's awesome. But also, Moving back to Portland, I lived in the same house with my grandparents, and and that was a, a favorite time when we get to talk to them. That's awesome. When I was in first grade, I got put in swimming class, and my sister Kay was even younger. We were put in class together, and we were such scaredy cats. We used to hide in the locker room from swimming class because we didn't like getting in. And the coach just kept after us and after us. And we both ended up on his swimming team. And I swam on teams all the way through college after I got started. But I started out by hiding out in the locker room instead of going to class like I was supposed to. And I was young, and it would be Thanksgiving. My father would load the car with tons of turkeys. And we would drive into the poor neighborhood and he would let me ring the doorbell and give them a turkey and all the trimmings. And some of them would hug us and they would cry. And that's where I think I learned to always want to help other people. I was younger than you are now, Jack, when I started doing it. That's one of my very favorite childhood memories. And one of my favorite memories is going to football games on Friday night. How about you, Nana? Well, I grew up in the same little town, still mill town, that Babap did. And my memories are, as I look back now, is just how much freedom we really had. We were able to go outside in our neighborhood. We had neighborhood friends that we could play with. We knew their families. And it was just... Um, very comforting. I didn't know it at the time, but it was just so very safe. Um, we didn't have a lot because my dad worked in the steel mill, but it seemed like we thought we had a lot, and that's uh, very rewarding. My favorite childhood memory is the days that I was on the beach with my family and my sister during the summer. We used to go on the beach and Go into the water and play in the waves. That was my favorite childhood. One of my most special feelings of my childhood is that we spent very special times with my family, which now comes through to my grandchildren, who I love to be with. And my special time with them is every Hanukkah when all of us are together in our house and we are eight grandchildren sleeping all over our house on every possible place and entertaining, they're entertaining us and we're entertaining them and it is the most fabulous week of my life. I love you all and I always will think of you in my heart forever. Mwah. But what was school like? Like, did you have any technology? No technology. Yes, we used our fingers for counting. Uh huh. That's uh, awesome. And that was as far as the technology went. Okay. We had no, no, technology. no technology. And phones. I uh, single we, phone hanging. We had one phone hanging on the wall. Mm hmm. Had, Rotary. No. <laughs> Okay. Well, did you have chalkboards or white? Oh, you can yeah. get chalkboards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
my school was in the Bronx and totally different than this. They didn't teach, they didn't have the electronics, they didn't have anything like this. So, but I remember writing compositions. You and I had talked about this one day. I loved writing stories. And that was my favorite thing, to write stories. One year, I went to a one-room schoolhouse where it was kindergarten through eighth grade. And we all sat, there were very few children, but we sat in the classroom. And we all learned at different levels. It was in a farmhouse. And the farmer, it was at a, on a farm, and the farmer put a schoolhouse on the property. And we all went to school. We had to take a taxi cab to school, but that's the way we got to school. You know what else we had that I bet you guys don't have, or girls don't have today? We had home ec. We had to learn how to cook and sew in school. It sounds the, sexist. I very, very. We was prior to my my grade school was prior to the women's revolution. So we had all these. We learned. We learned, the girls learned typing, so we could be secretaries. But things were they were like sewing says something that I do today that I need you know if I need to and I know how and I bet you. You're, what you're doing in sixth grade is what we did in ninth grade. And everybody did the same. So things are so much more advanced and it's just incredible to see. And to be here, to see you with this is such a thrill. You have no idea. I used to go to lunch with my sister in Kreskis which was the forerunner of Kmart. And for like 50 cents, we would go and get a couple of hot dogs, a root beer, an ice cream, and then go back after lunch to school. I was only like two blocks away from the school. That was super cool. And back then on Friday, you couldn't eat meat. That's my father. Catholic school. So we went to Crespi's. They used to make chow mein sandwiches on a hamburger bun. So we used to get chow mein sandwiches for lunch. Those were the days. No, we weren't allowed to leave the campus. We had school lunches. You couldn't bring lunch. You had to have a school lunch. Well, we could have, we could bring lunch, but there was no lunch provided by the school. So, would you say lunch was your favorite uh, part of the day? Yeah, actually we learned to print and then we had a lot of lessons, I think starting in fourth grade, of penmanship. And cursive writing, they that's had to learn cursive. cursive. Right, that's cursive, the penmanship class. And we know Nana's cursive is perfect. Yeah. Used to be. Right? Used yeah, to be. A little shaky. What, um, what's your... Well, I grew up in Kentucky, I had to learn how to milk cows. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> we used to walk to school in the rain and the snow and the ice, and it, it was about a mile. And then I would walk home for lunch and walk back. And, uh, got lots of exercise. But we didn't have any technology like we do today. I couldn't call my mother on the phone and tell her to come and get me or anything. So, it was a lot different. The eighth graders always had to put on a show at the end of the year, and I remember it being um, like a big dance fest, and um, I <coughs> learned how to do the tango. That was like kind of the only time that the girls and boys were like together, because we had to learn how to do these dances together. So that was fun, and then they had like an eighth grade dance too for us. Um, I remember that. We had to walk home to have lunch. We didn't have a cafeteria at our school. And I lived about five, six minutes away. I'd go home and have lunch and go back to school. And we, of course, we, ne we didn't have television, you know that. We didn't have any of the things that you kids have today. And I remember walking down the street looking in a hardware store, and I saw a picture. I said, oh, a picture on a radio. But that was the first time I'd ever seen television.
we lived in Cleveland, Ohio. I think it was 10505 Avon Street. And I think I moved there when I was in the third grade. But at the end of the street, maybe a quarter of a mile away, was a field. And at one corner had a little uh, playground. But we would play football on the field. And we might have just three kids against three kids, but we would try to tackle each other, uh, whoever had the football. So anyways, we ganged up on this one kid. He caught a pass, one hit him low, one hit him high, and son of a gun, he broke his ankle. <laughs> so we didn't do that too much anymore. We did a lot of foolish things like that. I started dancing much later in life, and I thought I'd never ever be able to dance. But as long as you have perseverance, you will become a great dancer that you are meant to be. En las 11 de la noche tuvimos que salir a buscar combustible. Y los, como toda la ciudad estaba casi cerrada, nos fuimos por las afueras. Encontramos a un patrullero que nos dijo, hay un grifo ahí con un kilómetro, pero preferible no vayan porque este, hay mucho tráfico de, de narcotraficantes. Nosotros hicimos caso omiso, nos fuimos a echar combustible y nos encontramos con una gran sorpresa. El grifo estaba ocupado por narcotraficantes que lo que hicieron fue sacarnos armas cortas y largas y amenazarnos con matarnos llevándonos a un matorral que, que quedaba al costado. Ese fue un caso particular en que podíamos haber terminado muertos. Y como coronario de esto, los seis nos fuimos, cuando llegamos a México, nos fuimos a visitar a la señora, a la Virgen de Guadalupe y agradecemos por haber seguido conmigo. Life lesson is that you don't know how lucky you are to be in the school with all this technology. Take advantage of it. Uh, and I had to take three buses to get there. At that time we took city buses, they didn't have school buses in the city. So it was uh, cold that morning, it was rainy, and my mother told me to take, uh, put, take my rubbers, and at that time rubbers were things you put on your, sh over your shoes to protect them, and take a rain hat, and take a rain jacket. So I did take my London fog lined rain jacket, but I never wore hats, still don't. And I wouldn't, 11 years old, I wouldn't be caught dead outside with rubbers on my shoes. So I went to school, and around 11 or 11.30, the cold front came in, and the storm that was supposed to be rain turned into an ice storm. So they called school off, and I got on the bus, and I got halfway home. And at that point, the temperature dropped. The bus couldn't ride anymore because of the ice. So I got out and I started to walk. And while I was walking, my shoes got wet, my socks got wet, my feet were cold, the snow was melting on the back of my head, dripping down my neck. And as I trudged along the streets, I said to myself, why do people live in places like this? And at that moment, I decided that I was going to move to Florida. Now, I was in junior high school, and uh, it took a while to, to happen. Uh, I went to the University of Maryland because that's where I was expected to go. But as soon as I left there, I went south, and I've never moved back to Maryland. My father had a factory and he made all the hats that were worn in the defense plant during the war and they worked 24 hours a day around the clock manufacturing those hats. They were called the Guardian and my mother's name was Ann and that's how Jenna is Jenna Ann. And I went to work one week and helped make those hats for the war, the war effort. And that's something that I remember very, very clearly. And the one thing that I'm so proud of you is that you remind me 
a lot of the way my dad was that you have a lot of compassion for people. Okay? You're named after your great grandmother. You're named after my mother. You're named after your mother's grandmother. Her name was Mildred, your name is Maddie. And I just want to tell you what kind of person she was. She was the kind of person that your mother, when she was a little girl, when she was your age, would sleep over at her house every Friday night. And she would play cards with her friends. I'm talking about your grand her grandmother, your great-grandmother. And before they went home, your great-grandmother Mildred used to make all the friends throw pennies under the table so that when your mother would wake up in the morning, she'd run in and she'd run under the table to see how many pennies she could find. She just adored it. And that's why when you were born, your mother named you after her. Your name is after Mildred and your name is Maddie. If you wanted Mari to remember one thing about you, what would it be when you're how gone much someday? I love her. Mm -hmm. How happy I was to go to Russia to get her. The thrill that I saw in Papa's face when he first laid eyes on her and he said, Oh my God, she's beautiful. And how happy she makes oh, everybody. how happy. She's made my life, my older years, very happy. That's beautiful. And she fills my time. That's sweet. Okay. I'm going to cry. Is there anything that you...